He's very good and very faithful. Amen. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, for just your hunger to go after him. Amen. And our worship team just to go after it. But you guys to go with him. Right? And, and not just rush through three choruses, but to hang out with him. He really likes that. You know, he's looking for people that will be with him. Amen. So, praise God. Well, we welcome you guys today. God's faithful. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. Yeah. Here. <laughs> so, and, uh, there was a cry within my own heart to be with Jesus freaks for real, and I'm just going to, you know, and this is just how I verb, and I'm sorry, but it's just been, a, you know, just to be in a place where the presence of God is so valued, Amen. and there's such an honor given to that, yeah. and we came, well, for me personally, came really hungry, and it, the transition has been really easy, and that bears witness to your headship, yeah. and it bears witness to your heart. And so I want to encourage you on a personal note as a sister in the Lord that you're contending for the right things. Some may not understand it, but they are those that are walking through those doors. That healing is coming so intensely. I can't even explain it. Your Amen. pastors have such a heart for the presence of God, and they're giving room. And it's just it overwhelms me. I can't even verbalize what's Happening Amen. within my own heart, Pastor Amen. Andy, this morning. Amen. When Amen. I was just there, I, I got, man, your, your prophetic team is so on point. And, and they spoke some things to my heart personally. And it's just brought such relief and such freedom. Amen. And this morning, I just, in the midst of walking in a darkness that, that seemed so thick. Do you know, sometimes in the, when you just don't know, and it just seems so, and you know, you're unsure about some things. And the darkness can be so thick. And I just felt the Father come beside me and say, I'm right here. And, and I'm leading you out of the dark. And so when I fell to my knees, I don't know. The Lord reminded me there was a word spoken over this body about honey. I began to taste it in my mouth. And I don't really like the taste of honey. <laughs> but within the walls of my own spirit, yeah. Pastor Andy, I felt... Yeah. The healing, the, the, the honey, I don't, I don't even understand it. And I don't have to understand it to enjoy it and just receive it. Yeah. But I can still taste it in my mouth. Amen. And I just want to lick my lips yeah. and lip, you know, just, mm -hmm. mm, just like, whoa. Because yeah. it's satisfying a hunger mm. and it, in me that I didn't even know I had. But man, mm. yeah. yeah. And I can feel it. Just I can feel it go. I can't just ooze down the walls of my own spirit yeah. and touching places, intimate places. Amen. Amen. That I've been Amen. crying out to the Lord. I don't even know what the, that ache, I don't even know how to verbalize that yeah. ache. And I don't want to hurt anyone. That's why I get up against the wall because I don't want to hurt <laughs> nobody. That's why I felt, I just, okay, Lord, I'm up against the wall. I don't want to hurt my sisters. I don't want them to, you know, like be afraid of me because I really yeah. like y'all. <laughs> so awesome and I love you and Amen. I don't really know you but it's like you know yeah. and so I just want to encourage you that word about contending sister that is man that's been going off in my spirit mm. because sometimes in the midst of contending for all that God has you know you you, mm. you seem so on the outside looking in you know yeah. but you're in your own self you know if they knew what you knew they would come with you but some don't and that's yeah. okay they don't yeah. But I just want you to know that you all have sowed some really good seed here and there's such a harvest coming. Yeah. And as far as a soul yeah. that's been aching, thank Amen. you. Amen. I want to say thank you not only for myself, but for my husband and my children because we feel so safe. And we haven't felt safe for a long time. Amen. And the Amen. healing anointing is so in this house. Amen. And they're going to know. They don't know that they know, and they don't even know that they want it, but they're going to yeah. want it, and yeah. it's just awesome. So Amen. Amen. Thank, thank you. you. I just want to say awesome. thank you. Thank you. Hallelujah. And you know, I... I 
Make sure. So, <laughs> am I on? Am, no. Hang on. Hang on. I was turning it off. So, yeah, there you go. I am on. Okay. Well, this morning when I'm on my way, I really felt my spirit that uh, Jamie and Andy, you know, they've been on the front lines for some time. They've been getting hit right and left, you know. And uh, I thought, man, Lord, maybe we could have a little time of testimony of just how much they mean to us. Oh, my God. And just to refresh you. <laughs> and uh, I was just thinking, you know, uh, this is an awesome guy. And I, I was thinking of, of that song, that last song, Show Us show us Yourself, Lord, or Show Us. Well, I, I, I said, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not the only yeah, one. Yeah, <laughs> show me, yeah, show me your Lord, you, you know, who you are, you know. And, and this guy and, and, and Jamie just demonstrate all the time. I know when I come to this church, I know that Andy is going to share the love of the Lord, yeah. and he's going to he's going to talk about the the love, and he and I'm not worried about anything. This man comes out of his mouth because I know his love, and I know their passion. Oh, I'm I'm serious now. He clown he clowns around, but you know what? God clowns around. And he's got a good sense of humor too. Yeah, for sure. And uh, so you know, let's not get too straight laced because God's not that straight laced. And uh, so anyway, I just I just wanted to say, you know, uh, the part of an apostle, and and we have uh, have one here in the house, and uh, is to is to bring the kingdom culture, that to demonstrate, to bring, to announce, to uh, uh, create, to promote uh, the the culture in the, of the king. And of course, you know, in the old in the old days, in, in Rome, what they would do is they'd send out apostles, and what they would basically do is Rome, bring Rome to the countries they had conquered. Yeah. You know, it's not enough that that, that Jesus conquered our sin, and yeah. and and and, and uh, you know, it, it did for us what we could not do. But now we need to be we need to be uh, the renewing of our mind. We need the culture of the kingdom yeah. in our life. Amen. Not only, not only does yeah. this in, the enemy be, need to be defeated, but now that culture need be de, de, needs to be developed in us, Amen. and so that we don't revert back to our old fleshy ways. Yeah. You know, and that's what would happen when you could beat an enemy, and if you didn't bring culture to them, they would re, they would start up again, and they'd yeah. become your enemy again. Yeah. And so the the, the love will come in not only defeat the enemy, but now love will bring peace, righteousness, yeah. and all that to us. And so I'm so thankful for Andy yeah. and Jamie for uh, being those examples yeah. and, and tirelessly, uh, mm. you know, uh, they walk in front. And that's that's a, that's a different shepherding is when you yeah. walk in front, you don't push people, you don't shove, you don't uh, try to, uh, you know, uh, say things that make them feel bad that like they're not good enough but they're always walking in front and and they just show us the way by walking in front and uh so i just wanted to let you know andy you. uh whatever you're going i know you're going through a lot but you are so loved you are and jamie you're so appreciated yeah, and and uh, there's nothing in vain in what you're doing yeah. it's all yeah. producing great fruit yeah. so Amen. i gave you a couple of minutes while i was saying these things Somebody else has something that 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 they that they feel like they need to do it. Okay. <laughs> so since we're railroading this thing anyway, so uh, when I when I went into Rockwall this week, I was sick. Like I had a fever, and I didn't tell anybody. I I literally had a fever when I went up there. What what Shelly doesn't know, and what Jamie and Eddie doesn't know is. I had an accident at work with Destin. I cut my hand, but that wasn't the problem. The trailer literally drove over my knee and my on Destin. It's like it was on it. So, so I'm like, God, like, it's what? hard to release healing. Yeah, it's hard to release healing if you're not healed, right? So I told Morgan and, and Marshall before I left, I'm like, like I was I was literally walking. I don't know how she didn't see it. So I get in the car and my leg is hurting so bad and my ankle is hurting so bad. I'm like, God, you have to come. And I get up there, and I have, I forgot. I preached the whole sermon, and I forgot. And, and when I walked, when I walked in, Tom goes, "There is such a healing grace 
on you. And guys, it's this house. There's such, you know, he kept saying, you know, he kept praying for you guys. He kept praying. He's like, they've been beat up and they keep standing up. Guys, it's encouraging people what our leadership does, what, what they keep pushing. They don't stop. They, it's like they're too dumb to quit. <laughs> this is what I, yeah, exactly. And so it, it literally gave me courage. But every time we would pray for somebody, it just came out, and Tom would go, there is such a healing grace that is coming out. Guys, you carry it because they carry it, but not just because they carry it. They keep sending it. That means they have to intake, and then they have to let it all out. Guys, it's being seen. It's being seen and being released. Now I'm going to go home. Oh. Be ashamed in front of my own wife. Amen. Amen. Oh gosh, you guys. Hey, this is good. Yeah. So I just want to thank you guys for the reckless love that you guys have taught me and my family. And you know, I didn't realize. But I really walk, and I still have to fight this orphan mentality at times. But it never fails that when that moment comes up that I can reach out to Jamie or Andy, and they just pour out this reckless love. And there are moments, you're right, we're out, you know, just doing life, and these people are so drawn to us. And I had someone the other day, they're like, I really don't know how to explain this, but it's like if love looked like something, I think it would be you. And I was just like, but it's because we came here and we thought we loved, but we loved out of religion, if that's even love. But thank you guys for teaching us what reckless love looks like because you've seen us at our lowest and you didn't kick us out. You still loved us. And it's just like, wow. So I just want to thank you guys for teaching and raising up a body that knows how to recklessly love. And I just, I just, I don't know. I feel like I just want to pray for you guys. And God, I just thank you that you're releasing your reckless love. And God, everything that these guys have poured out, God, you are just pouring out double to them right now. God, the reckless love, God, right now. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. And I love you guys so much. Anybody else? Thank you, Lord. Guys, I don't uh, talk much, but I gotta confirm this with you during praise and worship. I was tasting mm. the same honey, Amen. and you have no idea how I needed that honey. Yeah, amen. I'm a very private person, I don't share with anybody, but God knew people to send into my life and mm -hmm. pray for me. Amen. And these two yeah. have done a long time. Yeah. Back yeah. when we were behind the sun. Yeah. I've seen some awesome things I couldn't believe. Come <laughs> from the Baptist background, you yeah. know. Yeah. But I mean, they love me for so many very things. I yeah. both. They have They have so much grace. Amen. Grace. Amen. I just love these two. Yeah. I may be older than you are. <laughs> but to me, they're like my mom and pop. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. They are. Thank you. I needed these two in my life. Mm -hmm. Because I was an orphan. I had family, but I was still an orphan. I didn't know the love, the love that people could give out. The only love I knew was for the time being, if you did this for me or if you did that for me. But 
but I love the love and I love the Father because it comes through them and through the people that have been sent in place here. And I honor them to my last day. They, they are like my kids. They are like my kids. Thank you, Father. This is too much, you guys. Oh my gosh. I, I, this is too much. I, <laughs> Specifically for you and your wife. Okay. The, uh, the, the Lord said to me, He said, I, I am vindicating you. Mm. The lion has roared. Yeah. I am I am bringing righteous judgment against the enemy, mm. specifically how the enemy has come against you in your physical bodies, in your physical life, in your marriage. He says, I'm, I'm bowing the enemy's knees right before you. I'm weakening him. I've taken the strength wow. out of the enemy right now. And I'm standing in judgment against the enemies that have come against you. My hand is strong on you, and it will vindicate the word of the Lord in your life. Mm. Wow. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Wow. Hallelujah. And it has been one of those weeks. <laughs> wow. God's so faithful. Thank you guys so much. I just don't even know what to say, but you guys are just the best. And, and I, I was just so aware of that this morning and um, just, um, just so losing my train of thought, but that God really is finding what he's been looking for. And I don't say that to puff anybody up, but there's something of you, of the worship, of the faith uh, that, that's just breaking through in you guys. And, and I'll say something else about the honey. The only other times when I've really tasted honey, and I have tasted it before, is years ago when a move was breaking out in Oklahoma City. And it had been an extended move, and they were breaking into something. Unfortunately, it got shut down because of accusations. But in those moments, I stood in that meeting, and I was like, God, I taste honey, and it, it tastes like genuine revival and awakening. And there's an element, of course, of revelation and all that that comes with it. But I think when you're in the early stages of a real move, you'll often begin to taste and experience that. So we're, we're breaking into something. I think we've been very aware of that over the last weeks. And we, I mean, you know, I, I can't, if one more prophet or apostle comes in and tells us about what's coming, I just want to say, God, I don't want to hear it, but it's really happening. Amen. The things that he's promised, they're coming forth. Amen. So, hallelujah. Thank you guys for those words and that encouragement. Um, a few announcements. We're going to take an offering. We're going to transition. We've got some people we need to pray for. Um, but an announcements. So, thank you guys. Wow. I'll try to say these. Um, it's spring break. Hallelujah. But we will have Supernatural School tomorrow night. So, that is still on. Um, uh, developing a revival culture is our topic this month. Um, next Sunday, and I'm so excited about this, next Sunday we'll have Chuck Marr with us. And um, I actually met Chuck in Ringling, of all places, and developed a relationship with him, and we've been, we've been talking for years. It's finally time for him to come. Uh, Chuck is on staff at Kingdom Life in San Antonio, um, he's also a, a revival leader in the Bethel Leaders Network. And basically when you're part of the Bethel Leaders Network, and he's a son of Bethel, um, uh, you know, and that's, he was in Bethel when we met him. He facilitates revival groups for Bethel leaders. And so he's a young guy. He's powerful. Um, he'll, he'll be doing our service next Sunday. He'll be doing Supernatural School Monday night. Even if you're not enrolled in that and you want to come audit you can come and be a part of that. He'll be doing our chapel at Global Harvest Christian School. So many things happening with Chuck. Um, also, other announcements. Remember, Healing Rooms on the 30th, which is a Saturday. That's coming up. Um, let Shelly know uh, if you want to be involved in that. Then uh, one more announcement, uh, and then we'll take an offering. Um, Nick and Rachel Billman will be with us on April 16th. And Nick is a friend. Um, they're uh, they lead Shores of Grace in 
how do you say it, Emily? Hesifi, Hesifi, um, Brazil. They get people out of human trafficking. They care for orphans. They're prophetic musicians. They release the miraculous. They, Nick has been here before. Don't miss that. That's going to be a night of worship on a Tuesday night. And uh, Emily, of course, was with them last summer for a school. It's going to be phenomenal. So, hallelujah. Praise God. Many things happening. And that's not even Joe Moody that we're talking about, who will be back in May. And so Joe, Joe will be back with us too. So God's just doing a lot of really, really good things. Amen. So let's, make an, let's take an offering. Let's all stand together. Amen. And let's make this declaration together. If you're giving, lift your gifts to the Lord and declare this. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interests and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So come and give those in obedience and faith. We're just thankful for God's radical, radical love and generosity. Hallelujah. God's so good. He's so faithful. Amen. And we just... Honor Him and love Him. Thank you, Lord. Happy anniversary to Gary and Carrie. Amen. Anybody else have an anniversary this past week? All right. At this time, uh, let's dismiss the kids to go to Children's Church. Not the church of tomorrow, the church of today. So, and uh, we're just right here, sir. They're in the treasure chest. Thank you. And we're just thankful for what the Lord's doing. Amen. So one thing that I want to do before we, uh, before I preach some, some sort of message um, is we do want to <laughs> pray for Dwayne, Shelley, and Morgan. And they're going to be leaving this week for a trip to Mexico to minister. So if I could have... You guys come on up, and Dwayne, if you'll just give us a a brief report on what you guys will be doing, and then I'm going to invite the pastoral team together and just bless them as we send them out for this. Amen. Um, About two months ago, we went to Louisiana, and the pastor had literally said, go release the supernatural, and what he said was, look for honey. So we go down and we train some interns, and during that time, those, those interns, Morgan was actually part of the first teaching that the pastor that asked us to go to Mexico did. She was part of the first uh, school of worship. So we saw something come full circle. We don't think anything of it. That same pastor says, hey, would you guys be willing to do a revival in Mexico? Well, in 2006, Shelly and I went and started going into Mexico and made a relationship and re- rekindled a, uh, a mission down there. So that's where we're getting to go. The grandson of the church, uh, he was 16 when we first saw him. Now he's the pastor of the church. And so we're getting to go down and release the supernatural and start up. And God keeps saying, release love and wait for the honey. So I don't know how to express Amen. it anymore. Yeah. We're going to do that. So, Amen. Uh, yeah. Amen. Amen. So pastoral team, if you guys will come. And let's just pray for them, bless them, and just send them out. Amen. On this mission. So, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you not only for the honey and the love, but, Lord, we thank you for the fire. Yes, yes. Father, I thank you for the fire and the glory. Father, I thank you, God, that as as the apostolic church, they sent people out. Father, that there were teams that went forth in and out, even at Antioch, Lord. And, Father, what what they carried. And so, Father, we just bless this family. Father, we bless this family as 
as they go uh, and representing not only us, but representing a move. Father, representing all what they already carry. And Father, we just thank you for what you're sending them. Father, thank you for the love. Thank you for the honey. Thank you for the fire. Father, thank you for the glory. Thank you for the glory that you're releasing through them. Lord, we just bless them, Father God. We bless them. Father, thank you that you cover them, you protect them, you send them. Father God, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's a, uh, Other teams have gone, but Father, I just thank you for, again, that this is a first fruit of what you're doing. Thank you that this is a first fruit of what you're doing as you send people to the nations. You said that you would launch people to the nations out of this place and out of this city. And Father, we bless them. Father, we bless them. So, anybody have a word or a prayer? Not only do you carry the anointing that has already been built in your own lives and ministry that God has opened up to you in healing, the healing that you bring to people, but you carry the anointing of this house. You carry that apostolic upon you as you go, and so it is a deeper dimension. It's a greater dimension that's going to take place, and I bless you. I bless you with healing. I bless you with miracles. I bless you with deliverance, oh God, so that the people will be free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we just thank you for what you're going to do, and we yes. just celebrate. Lord, I thank you that even when those that stay and guard the, the baggage, yes. Lord, they get to share in the victory. So, Lord, we just share in the victory of what they are, are accomplishing, what they're carrying, what they're doing over these next days, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen? All right. Praise God. Amen. God's good. Amen. We're just so thankful for what he's doing. So, hallelujah. I'm doing good. I can get a good sermon in. Yeah, we got plenty of time. I can squeeze this into an hour and 15 minutes. I'm just kidding, y'all. I felt the faith level in the room just drop. <laughs> we need a lunch break, right? <laughs> Hallelujah. So I, I want to continue on what we were talking about last week, the foundation of the, the church at Jerusalem. You know, one of the things that God told us was that we would be uh, to model after the Antioch church. And I've talked about the Antioch church quite a bit. But there, there's a foundation that came out of the Jerusalem church, I think, that is really, really important to look at. And um, we know that anytime you look at something in the Word, something that's there for the first time, there's, a, there's an establishing of that. And, and the church at Jerusalem we need to look at. And uh, one thing, one scripture that I want to read, and then we'll, we'll look in the book of Acts. But 1 Corinthians 12.28 we looked at this last week. So uh, that, that apostolic anointing that we've been talking about, it's, an, and it's a, an extremely important anointing, amen? And it's not that the, the apostle or the prophet or evangelist pastors, teachers, it's not that one gift is more important than the other, but there's an establishing that comes with the apostolic anointing. And at 1 Corinthians 12, 28, it says that God has appointed in the church first apostles, okay? So I'm not preaching about apostles today. I'm not really, I'm touching on the apostolic anointing. But, but that word, the, the apostolic anointing actually opens up other things in the church. Amen. And so that word first in there, in that scripture, is proton, which means the first in time, the first in place, the first in order, or the first in importance. Amen. So the church of Jerusalem was a first in time, a first in place, a first in order, and a first in importance. Amen. And so, you know, the church at Jerusalem, um, and I, I believe as, as you look at the church at Antioch and you look at um, the church at Ephesus, those churches even broke through 
in a greater measure than the church at Jerusalem did. However, there was an establishing at the church at Jerusalem, and I think we need to look at that and see what qualities were present in the church at Jerusalem. Amen. And so one thing that's very important is, um, you know, uh, you know all, all of the churches of the book of Acts were apostolic in nature, but the church in Jerusalem had 12 apostles in it. It was an extremely, extremely apostolic church. And so it had a very strong apostolic dimension. So what did that look like? Amen. So let's turn to Acts chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. And we got through about half of these last week. I'll review and then we'll go on to the next ones. Uh, amen. So reading out of this, beginning in verse 42, they were continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayer. And everyone kept feeling a sense of awe. I feel a bit of that sense of awe today. Do you guys feel that? And many wonders and signs were taking place through the apostles. And all those who had believed were together and had all things in common. And they began selling their property and possessions and were sharing them with all as anyone might have need. And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart, praising God and having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number day by day those who were being saved. Amen. So it's an incredible move of God that's breaking out at the church in Jerusalem. And what did that look like? And again, this is a seed. Isn't that interesting? The church at Jerusalem, as powerful as it was, it was only a seed of what was going to come. Amen. And, and you know, incredible things happened at Jerusalem from that place. You know, the, you know, the eventually and a persecution comes because no one will leave Jerusalem because it's so glorious. We've joked about this before. It's like it, like living in Redding, California. It's so glorious, no one will leave, right? And so God's like, okay, I'll bring a persecution because you're not going into the dry places. And, and, and so everybody gets scattered when the persecution comes. But, but, but Jerusalem was the seed of what God wanted to do and increase throughout the earth. And you can study Antioch, you can study Ephesus, um, you know, powerful things. And even when Charlie Shamp was with us, he declared that, you know, that there was a, an anointing similar to Ephesus that was on the church here. And I, man, I'm believing for that because, you know, Ephesus, some people say, well, are more so rough. Well, Ephesus was the seed of Diana, the seed of idolatry for the known world at that time. And yet they broke through. And church tradition says there even came a, came a moment where that statue of Diana fell and toppled over and her head broke off because they broke through in warfare, amen? And so God's wanting that same anointing, but I'm getting way ahead of myself, right? Whew. I have to go fast, amen? So let's, <laughs> so let, so let's look at the church at Jerusalem. So first of all, the church was filled with apostolic doctrine. I mean, we talked about that last week. How many of you know it's good to have good doctrine? It's so important. There's so much flakiness out there right now. Right? It keeps you out of trouble or it gets you in trouble sometimes. Right? Um, the second thing that happened was there was fellowship. They were devoted to fellowship. And that's more than potluck. Now, that's part of it. Right? I better not talk about food. Right? But the word for fellowship means quanania. It's the Greek word, and it actually means participation, partnership, and communion. Amen. It was, a, it was a sharing of life. It was a sharing of even anointing. It was a sharing of commitment. It was a sharing of accountability that, man, we're in this together. We're in this to see what God has placed in us to join together, and we're sharing in each other's lives. Amen. And so that was an, that's the element of fellowship. There was the breaking of bread and communion, which was so important. Prayer. They were devoted to prayer. Amen. There was even an element of, of holy fear that came on the church. Right? 
and we didn't try to form any doctrine around this, but you've got stuff like Ananias and Sapphira dropping dead. You know, and if you read through the book of Acts, there's always that thread. You know, you guys have heard me talk about even the story where, you know, Roland and Heidi Baker were ministering at a meeting and, and two different groups came to mock in Africa. One group was a group of teenagers that came to make fun of what was happening and the other was a group of witch doctors that came to curse. And they all got knocked to the ground. And Heidi walked up to him and said, you know you really need to get saved. Man, that is not seeker-friendly evangelism, but I think it's very effective. If you get knocked to the ground and you can't get up, right, and this little American blonde woman comes up and says, get saved, I think that's incentive, right? So there was this element of fear that was even present in this holy awe. And then signs and wonders, they were such a important part of what was happening in the early church. And initially, it was just the apostles doing signs and wonders. But by the time the church got scattered in Acts 8, they go about preaching, you understand that they trained everyone who was in the church to do the miraculous. And that's actually how the Antioch church got planted. It says the hand of the Lord was with them. And that when you read that, when you read about the hand of the Lord, it generally means that God's doing miraculous things through his people. And so, you know, they're out preaching and, and they'd been trained in the miraculous and they were walking in it. But signs and wonders was so important. And we read last week out of Acts chapter 4, verse 33, and we'll look at that again in a few minutes. But it says that great grace was upon them all. Mega grace was on the church at Jerusalem. Amen. You talk about a mega church. The church at Jerusalem was a mega church, not because they had a lot of people, and they did, but they were a mega church because there was there was such, excuse me, <coughs> there was such great grace on them to not only move in everything that God had called them to do, but to move in miraculous signs and wonders. And that was the thing that we prayed last week and we released at the end of the sermon that mega grace would be upon you all. Mega grace would be upon us all as we went through our week, as we gathered together. Mega grace. Who needed mega grace this week? I did. Man, and it was so present. Amen. So that was what we talked about last week. Now let's continue. Amen. There was also this, this sense of, of unity that was in the early church, amen? And, and the believers were together and they had all things in common, okay? Now, I'm not advocating that we all live in a communion <laughs> together, right? I like some of y'all, but I don't want to live with you, right? <laughs> but, but there was this fellowship and, 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 you know, and we'll get to this in a minute when it talks about giving, you know, but there was this reality that you guys know that Jesus had prophesied that Jerusalem was going to be destroyed, right? Go to Matthew 24. It's actually about the destruction of Jerusalem in A.D. 70 and not the second coming of Jesus, right? I don't want to disrupt your doctrine too much, okay? But, but you know, it wasn't hard for them to sell their property and belongings where Jesus had basically said, hey, in a generation's time, this is going to happen, so if Jesus came to you and said, in 40 years, your city's going to be destroyed, you really wouldn't mind selling your property. Okay. That's a whole nother conversation, right? I, just, I like to mess with people a little bit, right? But, but here's the thing. They were in unity. They had oneness of purpose and mind, right? And you know, unity really is an indicator of the Spirit's presence, and it's a real indicator of revival. Right? When unity starts coming, it's something that the, the Spirit starts producing. And, it, and, it, and you know, when revival generally gets disrupted is when unity ends. Right? And it usually ends because people have different agendas or because of sin or because of motives that aren't good, right? That's when a lot of times revival gets disrupted. A lot of times, and, and unity is not the only common factor of revival, 
But a lot of times we have, we're such so divided as the body of Christ. Now, I'm not talking about a forced artificial unity where we get together and we, 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 we have to get together around the presence of God. We have to get together around not just a message or an agenda, but around the presence of God. I mean, you know, it's so funny when God was pouring out the river in the 90s, you know, in Toronto and everything God was doing through Toronto and Brownsville. And, and our church in Shawnee was experiencing a similar move. It was so crazy. And church was just, at that moment, I mean, and you guys have heard me talk about that all the ladies wore skirts. Not because we were a legalistic, that's just what they did. It was the culture, and they were older, dignified ladies. Well, they really weren't older now that I think about it. I was just really young. (laughs) But the move of God came so strong that the ladies had to start wearing trousers because they spent so much time on the floor or rolling around, and we were pretty dignified. You know, and we joked about having to put the overhead, remember the over, you know, put it on the wall, ceiling because so many of you were down, you know. Um, <laughs> but my point in all that, and there is one, uh, was that there was such a move happening that I remember just laughing hysterically under the presence of God with people that I didn't like. I'm just like, I love you, man. You know, and I was just like, this is not me. Because I really didn't like him, you know. But there was such this, this unity, this thing that the Spirit was producing. And it, it was all about, and you got to remember, unity really isn't just conformity. It's not that you have to look like me, act like me, or think like me. But real unity is actually saying, you know, you've got some strengths that I don't have. And you've got some things that I don't have that I'm not going to be jealous about, but I'm going to honor and value and love. Right? I need what you have. Right? You need what I have. I mean, you know, that, that's something that the Spirit produces. And it even means our doctrine may not even be all in agreement. You know, now there are basics. Jesus is the risen son of God, <laughs> born of a virgin, all these things, you know. But then there are certain things that you and I may not agree on, and that's okay as long as we don't make it a major issue or it becomes a stumbling block, right? And, and we're, yes, apostles' doctrine, good doctrine, it's so important, but, you know, I threw a wrench in while we go talking about Matthew 24. Some people are like, I don't know about that. Right? Some people are like, don't take my Antichrist from me. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Other people are like, what are you talking about now? Right? (laughs) But (laughs) unity is like, okay, God, we, we have to be united because, Lord, the, the moving forward of your kingdom is dependent on us uniting together. Yeah, now some, some of us, some group may have a different assignment. Right? You can get around a lot of intercessors, and we need intercessors. But they're all seeing something, hearing something. They've got their revelation and their prayer. And evangelists can't stand to be around intercessors. Because they're like, just go do something. (laughs) But how many of you know that without the intercessors, and we talked about this last week with Whitfield, when Whitfield's intercessors died, his evangelistic ministry ended. It wasn't Whitfield, it was somebody else. It was Finney, yeah. I know, everybody's like, what are you talking about? But it was Finney, right? And his whole ministry shifted when Nash and, and Clary died. So we need those things. We need each other. We even need other parts of the body of Christ. You know, if if people like Methodist and Baptist, if they hadn't fought for the truths and the moves that they'd fought for, we wouldn't be where we are today. 
I'm thankful for their tribe. I'm thankful for what they've broken into. Amen? Now, there's more. And some of them are going after it. Amen? But I value that tribe. I value what they stood for and what they broke into. So, you know, in unity, we learn to, to honor what the other has. Amen? Now, I want to look at very quickly at John 17. And so hold on, y'all. I'm, I'm reading out of the Passion. John 17, verses 22 and 23. I love how the Passion presents this. Jesus' prayer for unity. And we'll get there in a minute. When you use a, use a different Bible that is fairly new. It says, Jesus praying, You live fully in me, and now I live fully in them so that they will experience perfect unity and the world will be convicted or convinced that you have seen me for they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love that you have for me isn't that a great reading of that but basically Christ in us is the key to unity and Christ's prayer was that, God, let the church experience the unity that the Godhead has. Boy, that's remarkable. And that's not something that we can accomplish in our flesh. It is a work of the Spirit. Amen. Galatians 4.19. You can turn there. Uh, let, me, let me just go ahead and turn there and read it real quick. And I'm going to read that out of the New American Standard. But Paul's prayer in Galatians 4.19, he said, My children with whom I am again in labor until Christ is formed in you. Amen. Let me read that again. My children with whom I am again in labor until Christ is formed in you. Paul's desire with his, was that the life of Christ would grow in us individually and corporately. Amen. Until it produced Godhead-like unity in the body. He's like, I'm laboring that Christ would be formed in you. Right? Now, it's interesting because that says, yes, you know, there's a lot that says, yes, we've been given everything. Yes, we have been given everything. Yet, Paul was laboring because not everything had been fulfilled in, in those who he was teaching and discipling. He's like... I'm laboring, I'm interceding, I'm giving my life until Christ is formed in you. Until there's a unity, a Godhead-like unity that's formed in you. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's what unity looks like. Amen. Again, back to Acts chapter 2. Uh, another thing, we talked about unity. Next, this is a fun one, y'all, so don't worry. Again, I'm not taking an offering. Okay. But the Jerusalem church was a giving church, right? There was this radical generosity. You know that generosity is really one of the marks of revival? It really is. When, when you start not only selling your property, <laughs> you know that God's moving when in the book of Acts it talks about not only they sell their property, but they brought it and laid it at the apostles' feet. For one thing, because the apostles were trustworthy, right? Someone who really has a, 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 an apostolic call and they're walking in that, they'll be dead to money, right? How, how controversial would it be if when y'all gave the offering, I came up here and did this? That would be really controversial, wouldn't it? Talk about new rumors, right? <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but there was this such this radical generosity in it, and it wasn't so that, you know, Peter and the gang could get a new chariot. <laughs> it was so that there was this meeting of need within the church because you've got to remember, God so poured out His Spirit on the day of Pentecost, and you had everybody just hanging out. They'd come from all over all of the surrounding areas, they'd come to Jerusalem for the feast, 
And God pours out His Spirit, and it's so good, they're like, well, we ain't going home. That's really what happened. They're like, we, we're not going home. We're staying here because this is where God's moving. And so suddenly you've got thousands of people who hadn't been a part of Jerusalem who are living there and have no place to live. And, you know, so suddenly there's this great need. Well, what do we do? We meet the need, right? And if they came to Ardmore, they could probably all work in fast food restaurants. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> there's a need, right? <laughs> so, but there was this radical giving. And, you know, you see that they laid such a foundation of generosity that years later, when the church at Antioch was formed and prophets were prophesying at the church of Antioch about a famine that was coming on the earth, you know what the church at Antioch did? They, they took up an offering to give to the church at Jerusalem because they had so had a foundation of generosity. And, you know, we joke about this because if someone prophesied to me, like Jim Baker or somebody, that the end was near, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, because I think he talks about that a lot on his show, doesn't he? Right? But if someone... Pro- <laughs> Sorry, that's a bad side note, y'all. <laughs> but if someone prophesied to you, oh, famine's coming to Ardmore, or, you know, what are you going to do? You know, you're, you're going to take a... You're going to start hoarding. Right? Right? You're going to have your bunker filled with weapons and... But you know what the Antioch church did? They're like, let's take up an offering and give it away. That was the kind of radical generosity, you know. That, that's what happens in moves of God. People get so touched by the Spirit that they'll give away, you know, with boundaries and all that. Y'all, I'm not advocating. All, you, you hear what I'm saying, right? But that's what the, the and, it, and it wasn't socialism. Let me just say that. Number one, it was voluntary. Right? It wasn't forced by the government, but it was as the Spirit led people and as they lived in generosity. That's why socialism doesn't work, because eventually you run out of other people's money. What Margaret Thatcher said, right? Not trying to get political here, but um, wow, we're in a crazy moment in this nation. They uh, back to Acts forty-two, y'all. I'm just I'm all over the place today, but uh, you know they were se- Acts two forty-five. They were selling their property and possessions, and then in verse forty-six it says, "And day by day, continuing with one mind in the temple, and breaking bread from house to house." They were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. So there was was a daily thing that happened with them, right? And uh, they met, now it's interesting, they met daily in the temple courts, which was kind of like meeting in a corporate gathering together. And then they were also meeting from house to house together. So you had fellowship on two levels. You had large group of celebration, teaching, worship, but then you also had small groups of accountability and communion and relationships. So, you know, how many know there's room for both of those? You can't just say, well, the early church, they only met in homes and small groups. No, they met in the temple courts, right? So there's this element of, and and there's this element of of meeting daily. No, y'all, I'm not going to do a daily service. Some of us at the school already feel like that because we're here doing chapel every day, right? But, there, but there was, there's an element of that daily worship, daily communion, daily gathering together, daily focusing on the Lord's purposes, amen? And the next one, there was, there was gladness, right? There was gladness. They were, they were taking their meals together with gladness and sincerity of heart. They had gladness and joy even in the midst of great persecution because there was persecution happening, right? The religious spirit got stirred up. They threw some people in prison, martyred some people. But even in the middle of that, there was gladness, right? That's what the Spirit of God will produce in our lives. 
even in opposition to our circumstances. There's gladness, amen. And it says in, in Romans 14, 17, for the kingdom of God is not a matter of what we eat or drink, but of living a life of goodness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. I mean, we can live in opposition to our circumstances. Now, I love it when our circumstances are good. But no matter what's going on, God can touch us with His joy supernaturally in His gladness when we just live in opposition to our circumstances. Amen? Another thing that happened, there was, there was praise. They were praising God, it said in verse 47. The apostolic anointing will, will cause places to become centers of praise and celebration. Amen? Do, do we feel that this morning? I mean, there, there, there was just praise and celebration and coming forth. And, you know, there, that, that anointing will produce that. Amen. And, uh, and again, this, this praise will be instrumental in pulling down strongholds. Right? Worship, apostolic worship and praise, it'll start disrupting the enemy's system in a region. Isn't that what Psalm 148 says? Let me just, let me just read that real quick. Psalm, I'm sorry, Psalm 149, verse 8. And you know, it doesn't even have to be worship targeting the enemy. Psalm 148 talks about praise the Lord, sing to the Lord a new song. Amen. And his praise in the congregation of the godly ones. We're not going to read the whole thing. You can go back to that. You know, and it's full of expressions of worship. In verse 6, let the high praises of God uh, be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron to execute on them the judgment written this is an honor for all His godly ones. Praise the Lord. So what happens when we start releasing worship? Amen. Those kings start being bound with chains. Those things that have stood against the kingdom of God in a region. Why do you think there's continually a war over worship? There's a war over worship. Because those strategies of worship in a region that start disrupting what the enemy has kept in place, right? Worship, it, it, it disrupts. It brings confusion into the enemy's camp. It starts putting those things down. And it says it's an honor to do that. Did you know when we're worshiping, it's really about more than us? But when you begin to worship and you begin to magnify and with, with action, because sometimes we think, well, it's all about my heart. That's true. But with prophetic movement and action and singing and pouring out, those are actually weapons of warfare against the kingdom of darkness. When we're worshiping, we're dancing, and when we're singing and we're lifting our hands and we're kneeling, man, it's releasing judgment against the works of darkness. Worship is so vital. Amen. When we're bringing a sacrifice of praise, and a sacrifice, doesn't a sacrifice cost you something? If it doesn't, it's not a sacrifice. It's like, okay, God, I'm really tired this morning, but I'm going to stand in your presence. I'm going to raise my hands. I don't think anybody's looking, but I'm going to raise my hands. Right? Or I might even kneel. Oh. <laughs> or I'm going to sing, right? Because it's releasing a sound from my life that's disrupting hell. Right? And it's an honor for His godly ones to do that. Did you know that God said, you know what? I want to disrupt the kingdom of darkness and I want to shut crack houses down in this neighborhood. Because we all know that Ardmore needs to change. And he's like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use my people to do that. 
And it's an honor for me to use them if they'll just begin to sing. Now, it takes more than that, right? But, but that's where the battle begins. Okay. It's so awesome that we get to do that. It's so awesome, right, when our worship team begins to lead us. And man, when Dwayne and Alan and Olivia and all of them, when Olivia, you know, she's singing that this morning. God, we're just going to worship you. We're going to worship you even when we're in a trial, right? Even in the middle of it. Because sometimes when you're in the middle of a trial, what do you want to do? God, where are you? He's like, well, I'm waiting for you to stand up and worship and obey. And you guys were on it today, man. I'm just preaching to the choir, you know. Y'all are just crazy, tasting honey and rolling around, and, you know. It's awesome. So, <laughs> but it's just normal, right? It's kingdom normal. It's kingdom culture, right? But, but apostolic, the church, it was filled with worship. And again, this is a seed. I bet their worship wasn't as good as ours was this morning. I mean, it probably wasn't. They probably had some instrument with two strings, pling, 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 you know, or a tambourine, you know. I bet they didn't have a steel guitar. <laughs> My brother and I are continually at war on whether he's going to bring a steel guitar in here or not. He and Dwayne were like, Bethel's doing it. Well, when we get to Bethel's, when we get to Bethel's size, y'all can do it. Uh, <laughs> When they, well, technicality, right? <laughs> so praise, man, praise was so important. And it just, it shifts the atmosphere. Amen. And that's what the church at Jerusalem looked like. Gladness, praise, meeting together daily. And then the last one, favor. Right? There was such favor on the church. Now that doesn't always mean that you won't be persecuted. Because the church at Jerusalem, they experienced persecution, but the, the, it says there was favor on them. The city recognized that something was happening. Amen. And there was favor on them. And favor is from the Greek word charis, meaning grace or the divine influence upon the heart. There was a, there was a grace upon the church at Jerusalem that caused favor. Amen. And it was so powerful that, and, 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 and we'll, I'm getting ahead of myself again, but, you know, it, it began to change Jerusalem. Right? And God wants to give favor to churches that will affect their city, their region, their state, their nation, where they begin to recognize and say, we need your help. We need what you're, what you're carrying, okay? We don't understand it. We're a little scared of it, but we need your help. I mean, I'm believing for the day when the city government starts sending... Of course, Dwayne's, this will freak Dwayne out. Cause, but when the city government starts sending addicts to our deliverance teams because they have no other... They, they don't know what to do, right? When they, when they begin to recognize that there's an answer because of the presence of God that's on the church, right? God wants to do that. You know, I love the stories of when Amy Simple McPherson, back in the 1930s when she started the Foursquare Denomination, an incredible woman, and started Angelus Temple and built it in the middle of the, of the Depression and they would call for ambulance days. And the government had to bring in extra ambulances because they would take the sick and the wounded to the temple, to Los Angeles Temple, for Amy and her team to pray for the sick. Can you imagine today if the city of Ardmore was like, well, we got to get some extra ambulances, y'all, because it's, it's, it's ambulance day and... The, the, the sick, the dying, the wounded, they're being taken to the church. And I've seen pictures of stretchers of people laying everywhere, but I've also heard the stories about how Amy's house was 
behind the church, and there was this uh, this um, alley between the church and her house, and the ambulances would line up, and one by one, Amy would get in the ambulance and she'd pray. You know, or, or you have a you have a John G. Lake that established healing rooms in Spokane, Washington, and it's it's statistically proven that during that time period, Spokane became the healthiest city in America. Hundreds of, is it thousands or hundreds of thousands? Tens of thousands of documented healings that came out of those healing rooms that the, the statistic makers recognized. It. But it starts with people who are saying, you know, there's favor and I'm going to use that favor. Because God doesn't give favor just so we can say, man, I got favor. I'm highly favored. And I'm all for saying those things. But what do we do? How radical and how obedient can we be when God really starts giving out favor? Because it puts a demand on us. It puts a demand on us that we use what God gives and we begin to shift to city because of God's favor. Favor is a scary thing. Bethel said their greatest test has been favor and blessing. What do you do when God pours out favor? Do you just waste it on yourself? Or do you begin to use it to change a city? To change families? To change a region? To change generations of people? Because God's given you radical favor. Because didn't God pour favor out on Solomon? Do you use it to just have more wives? <laughs> I ain't touching that one. <laughs> but, and all the women are like, mm -hmm, well, we don't want no more husbands either, right? <laughs> but that radical favor, it gets poured out. And what was the fruit? What was the fruit of all these things? It says that, oh, I keep losing acts. Y'all are smarter than me. You hold your... Yeah, that's right. Acts 2, verse 47, I believe. And the result of all of this, what was the fruit? They were praising God, having favor with all the people. And the Lord was adding to their number, day by day, those who were being saved. I mean, sometimes we get thrilled when we have one salvation a year. When, when that anointing got released and it became part of their foundation and part of their culture, and it just wasn't in the leadership, but it was in all the people, right? Day by day, people were getting saved. You couldn't keep people away because they recognized, we don't understand everything, and we've even heard about Ananias and Sapphira. We want in. We want in on this family. We want in on what God is pouring out. We're being wrecked because all these people that have come to Jerusalem and all these, all of our friends and our family, they're, they're, they're carrying something that, man, Peter's shadow, it's even falling on people and they're getting healed. Can you imagine what that looks like? But we have to remember this was a seed that God wants to grow and be greater even than it was in that moment. Why not us? Why not now? Why not here? Why not Ardmore? Ardmore is not too hard. Carter County is not too hard. It's not too hard. It, you know, when we planted the church, God told us to start declaring it was a new day. He said, just declare it. It's a new day. He said, you can rewrite the history in this city of what you begin to believe for and what you begin to proclaim. So we just dropped that Ardmore was too hard. We dropped that from our vocabulary. Amen. Now, there was times I wanted to, I wrote it down. <laughs> I can't say it, Lord, but bless God, I'm writing it. Right? <laughs> 
And we begin to just declare it. Man, it's a new day in this city. And we begin to declare that. And God's doing incredible things. Now, do I want more? Yes, but man, God's just looking for people crazy enough to believe what He's saying. Where are the, like we talked about last week, where are the Mariah Woodworth Edders? The granny that they sent in to hard places. Because she could break them open. They're like, everybody else has failed. Let's send, let's send grandma in. You know, her husband left her. She just keep trucking on. Where are the Catherine Kuhlmans that even though she'd been divorced and was a woman, she'd go in. Johnny Carson would have her on his show. Right? Because she'd go in and, and she, she united segments of the body of Christ. You know, God's looking for people. He's looking for churches who'll say, man, we've all been, we've been baptized into something corporately and we're carrying something of his glory and his presence of transformation hallelujah he's doing it he's doing it and i'll never forget and i'm not going to say him again you know that series of dreams i had about five or six years ago where bill johnson handed me a stack it's a dream y'all don't get excited but i had four dreams about bill and benny johnson and then the third one, Bill had a stack of drawings and maps and architectural drawings and st stack of notebooks. And he handed them to me and he said, these are yours. There was something that we received. Now, now does, it, is it, does it require tenacity? Absolutely. Doesn't everything worth something require tenacity? and risk and courage. I mean, he's giving an anointing to transform the city, right? And may we be marked like the church at Jerusalem. May we be marked by those principles of presence. May we be marked that that presence and that glory and that anointing not only changes us and transforms us, but it begins to touch our city. I challenge you today. You're an apostolic people. Amen. You're a prophetic people. You're carrying the glory and the presence of God. May great grace be upon us all. Mega grace. Man, that same declaration that we ended with last week. Mega grace, God. A great, great measure of grace that's upon us, God. A great measure of your grace and your glory and your presence that's upon us, God. Lord, we thank you for that outpouring of grace right now. God, we just receive it even right now as a people, as families. God, pour out your grace right now. Measures of grace, measures of grace. Father, if we're going to Mexico or if, or if we're going to DHS or if we're going to Walmart, Lord, I thank you that we all have, we all have, we need grace for Walmart. Lord, but I thank you that there is a measure of grace that's more than sufficient, it's more than enough for what we need that's being poured out on us today. Hallelujah. I was just going to read one, one last thing in closing. It says, and out of the, the Passion Translation, the apostles gave powerful testimonies about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great measures of grace rested upon them all. Lord, grace today. Not greasy, not greasy grace, but Lord, grace that empowers us. God, empowering grace. Empowering grace, God. We receive it, Lord, to do what you've called us to do. What you've, what you've called us to do, God, you empower and you equip us. And so, God, we just receive that. Measures, 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 measures of grace upon us all today. Thank you, Lord. We just receive it. We take it in. We don't despise it. But, Lord, we utilize it today. And we thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're giving us today. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Lord. Whew. So today, you're commissioned to walk in grace. Amen. Not just grace, a great measure of mega grace upon you today. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. So receive it. Walk in it. If you have, if you need prophetic ministry today, we're going to have a prophetic team here. Amen. If you need prayer for physical healing, we're going to have a team here. Come and receive those things today. Amen. Amen. Wow. You guys are awesome. Yes, sir. So we have an opportunity to be a part of people going to Mexico out of our church. Could we not Amen. give into what you're talking Amen. about? Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put, we can do this. Amen. So we're going to put these baskets here at the front. If you want to sow into this team going to Mexico, amen, come and do that. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Bless you guys. You can just give. You can come and receive ministry if you need to. Have a great week. Hallelujah. In the presence of God. I finished my assignments this weekend. Hallelujah. I'm done for a week till I start hermeneutics. Amen. Bless you guys. Have a great week in Jesus' name.